I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. <laughs> What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Courts Outside Out Podcast. Once again, I'm Josh Shovinoff. He's the one and only Angel Ortega. Lots of us talk about this week. Obviously, we got UFC 269 recap. Uh, UFC Vegas 45 going down on Saturday night, as well as Jake Paul and Tyron Woodley. We're going to be facing off once again. For the end of the show, as always, you're brought to you by Rogue Energy. If you want 10% off your order at RogueEnergy.com, use the code SOUNDOFF at checkout. It's code SOUNDOFF at checkout for 10% off of all your energy needs. Obviously, fantastic sponsor of the show. Have been for quite a while, and we are still huge fans of the product. Last Saturday night, from the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada, UC 269, huge card. One of the best ones of the year, and honestly, just top to bottom, results-wise, probably the best card of the year. Uh, but in the main event, Charles Dubronx Oliver retains his UFC lightweight title, defeating Dustin the Diamond Poirier, via third round rear naked choke and still said on the podcast last week Oliveira in under 15 and he got it done ladies and gentlemen he is still the lightweight champion and first of all a lot of stuff to take away from this fight obviously first round seemed like it was going to be Dustin's fight man he knocked down Oliveira he seemed to be you know cracking him multiple times throughout the round round two it all changed he got on Oliveira got on top in a scramble landing some huge elbows and ultimately, round three, after dominating on the, excuse me, after dominating on the mountain, round two gets the rear naked choke finish in round three. A lot of stuff to take away from this one, man. Uh, first of all, what were your thoughts on Oliveira? And what were your thoughts about the next matchup for Oliveira and Justin Gaethje? I mean, you kind of laid it out there perfectly with the card and everything, as far as how the results ended up happening, and you know, obviously, kind of like top from bottom, like you mentioned. I just wanted to mention that there a little bit again. And in the end, like you said, Charles Oliveira gets it done. I mean, it was a beautiful performance. Um, obviously, like I mentioned early on, it was looking a little scary. I was pretty confident with my pick. I was like, okay, seems like I made the intelligent decision uh, once again. Uh, they end up going my way, but, you know, that's perfectly fine because in the end, you know, like you said, uh, Charles Oliveira ended up getting the submission win, which obviously for Dustin, very heartbreaking, man. Another title fight and for it to end in the in the same kind of submission, it must be kind of daunting, right? Uh, mm. I heard I heard some th- I, I heard on some other podcast kind of mentions of like he you know he was he just focusing on his striking too long because of Connor and didn't think about the wrestling and, and and I wouldn't blame it fully on that I mean I think Dustin's a very talented individual I think there's a lot of factors uh that maybe played a part I thought the body shots might have been a big thing for him man because I could tell that some of those body shots when they started landing he did not it was kind of one of the last ones that he landed it was very clean all there did that he just. When he got hit by it, I could tell he didn't respond to the same to it as he did to the rest. And that shit adds up, man. It adds up, and after that, it's a different kind of fight. And once he hit the ground, he looked very uncomfortable, and, you know, Oliveira took him down, which I didn't think Oliveira was going to take him down. I mean, it wasn't easy, but it, it, it I didn't think Dustin made it as difficult as I thought it would have been. I thought it would have been a lot harder for the fight to get to the ground. But it ended up being Oliveira with the level change, and... uh with the decision of Dustin kind of trying to roll out of a submission there, which also ended up being kind of weird. And some people, uh, or a lot of people mentioned how that was a bit odd that he decided to roll and not like stay with the arm standing up. I don't know what, you know, he might've been thinking he could do something there. No judgment. Right. But, it, but in the end, like, like we said, it, it doesn't all matter. You know, it all leads to the same point. Charles Oliveira gets the submission. And I mean, Josh is, this is the continuation of the win streak, a continuation of the finish streak. I mean, he got his flowers. He cemented as a 155 king. No doubts anymore. It's all about getting the title defenses now, increasing your legacy. I mean, Josh, he's building his way up, uh, up the 155 all time list. I mean, it's, 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 it's fucking beautiful. It really is. And you mentioned that kind of role, uh, in the second, uh, the second round, I believe. Um, you know, that was interesting to me, but I think not, honestly, my issue isn't that he rolled. I thought it was fine. Um, it's that he entirely conceded being on the bottom for the rest of the round. Like, once I saw the fact that he was not g- even trying to get up and he was just trying to pull guard, I thought that was a really bad sign. Um, and then obviously he just took a bunch of elbows to the face and, you know, 
got tired out and took a lot of damage. I thought it was like one of the, I feel like if there's one moment Dustin's going to look out for the rest of the fight, it's going to be conceding the ground position. Because if you're, if obviously, if you're going to get choked back, like choked out on your way up, you know, at least you try to get up. At least you try to do something to do. Like he, he pretty much conceded the fight whenever he sat on the ground for the entirety of the second round. Um, and let's go ahead and dispel something right now. Um, as well, because, you know, something that got brought up a lot in the aftermath of the fight was obviously during that section we were talking about, like, he rolled and he ended up on the bottom. There was no glove grab. Let's go ahead and say that right now. Uh, I didn't even know, uh, Angel, I'm sure you were watching with commentary. You are hanging out with the boys. Did Joe Rogan really freak out during that whole scramble? Because from what I heard, Joe Rogan was, like, freaking out. Um, I don't know if he freaked out, but he mentioned, he's like, I think, I think there was a glove grab there. I think he might have grabbed his glove. Uh Okay. Yeah, because from what I've heard, Joe Rogan apparently, like, said the glove grab thing, and that led to Oler getting a bunch of shit. I, I went back and rewatched it. I've watched it slow down. There was no glove grab. It wasn't anything, you know, it was not a huge deal. Um, but yeah, dude, Olivera, what a win. Honestly, did he remind you of anybody win. that night? So did, he, did he remind you of anybody else that night out of curiosity? Or of another mean? fighter? Uh, another? Olivera? Yeah. Not really. Do you remind? Do you remind you of somebody? I I felt some Tony Ferguson in him that night, dude, with the elbows, with the dude. Did you see the Wing Chun that came out a little bit there too? Like I, it was, it was there. Like it, maybe not as much as it wasn't to the extent that that uh, maybe Tony did it too. But there was a little bit of technique there, and and the elbows, not the slicing elbows like Tony, but mm-hmm. uh, there was that one elbow at the very start where he's really close with Dustin Man and he throws a short elbow. I mean that reminded me a little bit of Tony, and obviously. I know Tony's on like maybe like the submission guy to Oliver is, but you know Tony could get submissions in his own way too, and it, it, it kind of reminded me a little bit in that way. I, I don't know, there was just something there, and then the energy kind of gave off after he he won the fight. That that little look, uh, I saw someone throw a little edit out there, and I was like, that's that's pretty sick. Yeah, it's possible that whenever he beat Tony, he transferred the energy to Charles Oliver. Now that you bring it up, I kind of I kind of see it. The, the the black Air Force energy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know what? I kind of see it. I kind of see it. Um, yeah, dude, just what a performance. I, I honestly, like I said, in the buildup, I thought there was so much disrespect being thrown in the direction of Charles Oliveira. People calling Dustin the uncrowned king, and I get it. A lot of people love Dustin, but dude. He really was, not, though. Dustin really was the uncrowned king there for a bit. You can't deny it. Come on. Yeah, I, ju- I, I just did. Once Oliveira got the belt, I mean. I mean, I mean but now Oliveira is the king. You know, He's not the uncrowned king no longer. Regardless, I thought there was a bunch of disrespect being thrown in Charles Oliveira's direction, and I'm glad he dispelled that that notion. You know, hey man, um, what is it now? Eleven fights? I mean, there's no question. Yeah, no you know what's interesting though? His next fighting is Justin Gaethje. Uh, I actually think that's going to be a lot more tough for him. Uh, I, I, with that camp, yes, I think with the group of people they have, I, like uh, obviously we're not going to give like a major breakdown on it, but yeah. we we know what each guy has as a skill set, right? I mean, this is a uh, I mean, when you break it down, Joe, it's, it's a you gra- jiu-jitsu guy versus a striking guy, right? I mean, let's just be honest, right? At, kind at their, of. Oliver. 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 Uh, but at its at, at their both at their best, their best skill set is what? You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, let it be known. For sure. And here's the thing that, like, um, obviously, it's going to be a very weird fight because Oliver, I think, showed in this fight, like, people are like, "Oh yeah, but he can't, he can't take Justin down." Like, he doesn't really need to. He kind of just needs to get a hold of you, honestly. He actually took um, him down, though, which was even crazier part. He did, but he doesn't really need to get a takedown. He, as, as long as he gets a hold of you, that's it. I mean, uh, but at the same point, and Charles Oliveira's striking has improved a lot. Like, I loved the body work he did to Dustin. Because Dustin can go long into the fight, but, dude, he was winded going into round three. It's a lot of the work that was done to the body, kicking all the air out of him. But at the same point, I love Oliveira's striking. He's still very, very hittable. Um, and so it's going to be an interesting matchup, dude. It's going to be a very, very interesting fight. Uh, I think Oliver's already open as like a minus 300, which I think is honestly pretty wide. But regardless, very, very fun fight. Hopefully we get that one next year, um, early next year, I guess I should say. be an awesome fight, though. But as far as I feel like the bigger news coming out of the card was not Charles Oliver's crowning moment. I honestly feel like it was the co-main event. Uh, Juliana Pena springing, in my opinion, um, the greatest upset in UFC history. If not, it's in the top two top three no uh, fuck def- that it is it is the best it has to be dude. you can you can still argue i think the only one you can honestly argue is uh sarah versus gsp that's the only one well yeah only 200 ufc later you know what i mean yeah yeah so that's the only one you can honestly argue um it, they're one a one b but regardless do not defeating amanda nunez via second round 
uh, submission, rear naked choke. I uh, say rear naked choke, really didn't get under the chin, but regardless, uh, <laughs> did go down as a rear naked choke win. Um, first of all, dude, there's been a lot of talk coming out of this fight. There's been, um, a lot of stuff thrown towards Amanda's way. I know Joe Rogan said it was like, oh, it was inexcusable for her to gas out the way that she did. And, uh, I see a lot of people putting kind of the blame on Amanda. Was this the case of, um, just Juliana Pena having the night of her life? Or do you think it was honestly more, you know, warning signs for Mandy Nunes that maybe she wasn't fully there for this one? I don't know. I keep hearing that the, the, she wasn't there, and I refuse to believe that because I don't think she could not be there and make that wait again after so long, go through a camp, and do all the things she has to do to prepare, diet properly, you know. It, it just doesn't make sense to me. I refuse to believe that. I think it was a combination of her coming back down to 135, and her not being used to being there, you know, like she is at up at one, uh, what is it, 145, right? Yeah. And having that extra, you know, bit, a bit of mass on her and, and feeling comfortable and not having to cut weight and, and maybe even a little stronger. And now she had to cut weight. She hasn't been here in a while. You know, she, she has a family, she has a, a child now. Like there's all these, there's, there's these other factors, right? But I don't think that's, that's the full effect of it, right? I mean, we have to give credit where credit is due. True, my opinion. All tricks aside, you know, she came out and did what she said she was going to do. Mm-hmm. Like quite literally, she kept saying she was going to do these things. And I was like, and I was in no disrespect to her. You know, it, it wasn't the first time we've seen someone or seen someone say or, you know, give us this plan out that they're going to do this against Amanda and make all these promises and they don't happen. And she went in there and quite literally did what she said she was going to do. And it worked. It fucking worked. I jokingly told you though this was calculated, man. She brought her down to 135 like boxing, you know, mm-hmm. and 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 she and she was gonna walk her down and she was gonna get right up in her face and you know I was saying this all and not to not to make fun of her, but you know in the in the the idea that it it, it wasn't gonna happen, but it, it, on the off chance it did, just that would go down, and mm-hmm. well, it went down the way I didn't think it would go down, and uh, it was it was insane. It was one of I mean, Josh, that has to be one of the craziest captured titling, ca- title capturing moments in the history of the UFC, right? Like, it mm-hmm. has to be. I mean, in recent memory, I mean, fuck, man. I'm trying to think. Obviously, like, prior to that, probably Jose Aldo getting finished in, in a few seconds by Conor McGregor. And in more recent time, let me think, like, I, I mean, I, at least at the time, I didn't think, I thought Robert Ridicker was going to beat Israel Adesanya. And, you know, the way Izzy beat him, right, was kind of insane. And, the Francis Ngannou, you know, renaissance of him. Well, not really renaissance, but reinventing himself, right, and coming back to fight Stipe and, and scrambling on the ground and and, be, and, and and taking the back a bit there and, and you know, and then putting him out in, in the falling around. I mean, it was, you know, it's it's we get all these amazing moments in recent time, but that one is uh, just one that sticks out right now, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and honestly, dude, like, she did everything she said she was going to do. Now, if I obviously picked against Juliana, but I could see there was obviously a path to victory for her there. I thought it was to take her down, tire her out, and obviously Nunes has asked in the past, but she's not done it in quite a long time. None of that happened, actually. Um, that first round was all Nunes. She knocked her down. She landed on top, and she did a lot of good work from the top. Obviously, uh, Juliana got like a... She went for a Kimura, but it wasn't even close to getting in. But dude, going out of that round, you see Amanda going back to her corner. She was gulping air, bro. And I thought, man, Juliana's going to take her down. This is going to happen. That's going to happen. No, dude. She stood in the pocket and was just like, you know what? Fucking swing and bang, bro. Like, and she just, Juliana Payne's never been known as, like, a great striker. So she's always been competent. You know, she's been very basic, very rudimentary, but it's always worked for her. But, dude. It, it's good it. enough, right? It's that's, good that's enough. What a, in that but degree. even then, it's pretty not, you know. Yeah, but, dude, this fight, and obviously, it wasn't great either. Like, you can tell there's not a whole lot of power behind her shot. She's still not great at leveraging her power, stuff like that. But, dude, her jab was on point. Her right hook was money. She was finding the home for the stuff. And even if it doesn't hurt, dude, she was landing, you know, three, four punch combinations just at will. Like, Anuna's just running face first into her jab. Um, there's a lot of stuff that I think you could take away from this fight. Now, I'll say this much. They're going to rematch. I pick Nunes and rematch cleanly. Oh, yeah. uh, and I honestly think just this is a combination of Juliana having the best night of her career. And also just Nunes. Is it weird? Did she almost seem like, I don't want to say happy she lost. She honestly looked kind of relieved. 
It's like, am I the one that got that vibe? Maybe, you know, it, it might sound crazy, but maybe she's like, it feels good to be mortal. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's yeah. going to say crazy, but it, but it's not in a bad way, but it was almost kind of like, you know how some fighters have a hard time getting up because they don't have goals anymore? You yeah. know what I mean? Or, or they kind of achieved other goals. And for her, I mean, I mean, Josh, how many years was it of, since 2016, right? Hadn't yeah, but she was fight. undefeated before that. I don't think she was lost in, since 2013, I think. Well, she had that Kansas Gano loss in between. Oh, yeah, you're right. Never mind, never mind. But, but even then, there was, in 2015. But there were still some gaps there, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, you know, she hadn't lost a lot in the last... Decade, is, yeah. Yeah, the last decade. Yeah, and maybe that was like, okay, I have something to work for now. You know, like, it, it's going to sound crazy, but sometimes that people get... Some people get rolling like that, man. Like, a challenge kind of makes them feel alive in a way. You know what I mean? Yeah. She's like, finally, someone who who, who I can take on, right? Something to work for. Because before, she was just kind of... It might have been just going through the motions before. I don't know. There's a lot of things, right? I mean, we're, we're obviously taking an angle here, and we don't know exactly yeah. where her mindset was. But you're right. She didn't seem that heartbroken after it, but she'll definitely come back. And the way she talked afterwards, she's like, yeah, I need to come back. You know? You know, it wasn't like... Uh, mm-hmm. it was. She could have worded that very differently. She's like, you know, I, I need to go back, train you know get in shape and we'll run this back because i felt like if she was going to retire or if she if she would have been broken after that she would have had a lot different statement afterwards for sure i don't think she's going to retire i thought maybe she wouldn't the moment i thought she I, I remember her taking her gloves off and i was like oh well that's that but i guess not but she's not going to retire which is fine i'm glad she's not i think she'll she, i think she still has a lot to give to the game she's only 33 or 34 i think um but, dude, like, I really think it was just a combination of things. Like, I don't think you can ascribe just, oh, yeah, Juliana had a great night, or, oh, Amanda just, you know, she wasn't there, she didn't want to win, or blah, 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 blah. Um, I think she got gassed out. I think she panicked under she gassed out. She, she hasn't done it in a long time. Um, and, you know, Nunez, it's been so long since this happened, but Nunez kind of, back in, like, 2014, 2015, she had the reputation that Oliveira did, similar. Not exactly the same thing, but, like, Whenever the chips were down, or she got gas, or she got tired, or she got hurt, she would kind of wilt a little bit, and that and that kind of happened here. And that's you know we can argue whether or not it's a fair reputation after this fight, but that's pretty much how it used to be, and we kind of saw that same thing happen um, in the Kaz and Gano fight, in the I believe the Sarah, I believe she lost to Alexis Davis as well in a similar capacity. Um, so yeah, I think it's a combination of things. Overall, I think Amanda Nunez is going to be fine. I think this is just a bad night at the office for her, and Juliana Pena had the best night of her life. I think it's, I think it's those two things. Because Amanda Nunez, um, obviously, Juliana Pena did great, but I don't think, I mean, we've never seen Amanda Nunez look as rough in the striking as she did. Um, I mean, yeah. she, like I said, I even brought it to you whenever we talked, like we got, we hopped on a call, like right after that fight, and I was like, dude, she ran face first into four straight jabs. Like, we like, and I see people are like, oh, lol, women's MMA is just terrible. I'm like, no, dude, dude, Nunez is, is, you know, the, she stood out as always being like the best striker in women's MMA. Cause I mean this in like a complimenting way. She punches like a dude. Like, I mean that like in a very complimenting way. Um, she like leverages her punches. She's very clean. She's very technique focused. She's not winging a lot of punches. And yet she like fell back in habits I've not seen of her. I mean, I've watched most of Nunez's career. I've even watched her old Invicta fights. I've never seen her fight that way, like, in terms of being that rough. And she got gassed, and you know what happens, man. But I think she's going to be fine. I really think she's going to be fine. But, yeah, I think we're both in agreement, though. This one had you on your feet, didn't it, though? Like, it did. Yeah, it, 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 was, was, it, was it was one was of those. Fun. Yeah. It was you know, fun our, fight. Dude, it's it's so funny because, we, you know, we were hanging out with our friends, and or I was. Josh could have been there, but, you know, he had some matters to take care of. That's just yeah. how life is. <laughs> and... uh one of our friends said, you know, I could bet my life on Amanda News. Actually, he he's like, I actually will right now. Proceeds to bet his life in the first round. And, I mean, you talk about top ten anime betrayals. I mean, Josh, that has to be number one. <laughs> yeah, it, you're talking about Nate, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, former host of the podcast, Nate Beggs, if you guys. Put oh, on here, what, two times? Three times? Dude, no, I mean, it wasn't even, yeah, like two times now, but yeah. dude, it was hilarious. He said that, I'm like, yeah, dude, someone bet $300,000 on this, on this fight, like $315,000, something like 40000 I'm like, I don't know about that. I mean, it's not a bad bet, but I'm like, I mean, if you're betting $300,000, I'm sure you have plenty of enough money to yeah, feel you confident. Fuck you, money. you feel, you're comfortable enough to bet, to bet that amount, right? For sure. Uh, yeah, that guy's, that, after seeing that fight, that guy must have been hitting the air. He must have been like, there's no fucking way. Not <laughs> this one. 
I can't believe it. I had, you know, he was like, I just want to get a little extra 40k in my bank account. And, uh, yeah, this happened, Brody. <laughs> and, and that's just how fighting is, man. I bet you someone bet on GSP that night and didn't expect GSP to lose. <laughs> For sure, man. It's, as far as the fight though, man, it's gotta be number one or number two. I see, I see a lot of people arguing a lot of different things. I say number um, one, dude. Home, yeah. Rousey, I see people arguing, but I think that one, in, in hindsight, in hindsight, yeah, it's one of those things where like, man, a lot of people just built up Ronda, man. Like I wasn't, I, I picked her. You can, I can, I can attest to this. Uh, had, had a, I'm sorry to cut you off there. Had yeah, GSP already uh, rematched Matt Sarah, or not Matt Sarah, Matt uh, Hughes, Matt Hughes after the Matt Sarah. Fight. Yeah, I believe so. Uh-huh. He, I believe he's coming off the Hughes win. Okay. And then See, you fought him again in the trilogy. Like right after. I can't remember his record at that point because obviously you you think of GSP now rather than GSP at that point in his time where he was like GSP was at a good point, but I don't think it's like what Amanda is right now. You know what I mean? And that's no disrespect to GSP because GSP had an, I mean, quite literally top three best careers. You know, you can argue. Oh yeah, that. he's he's goaded literally. But but at that point, GSP didn't fully like have everything cemented like he does now. Where I think Amanda's more close to the end of her career than GSP was close to the end of his career at that point. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, for me, I think I, I have Juliana over the GSP thing just because GSP at that point in his career, we knew how good he was and we thought he was the future, but we didn't, he wasn't some dominant champion. Amanda quite literally has not lost in years. She, she's the first time in the sports history where I feel like we've kind of centered in on one person. She's the GOAT. She's the GOAT for women's MMA, and it's been that way for years, and she's still active, and it's very rare for a sport to have that happen. Shout out, Cyborg. <laughs> shout out. Shout out. But even that during hey, Cyborg. Hey, I'll, I'll make a little argument every now and then for Cyborg, just so you know. Really? Why? We talked about it off air, dude. I just think there's an excellent case. That's all it is. We don't Cur- like, a- Currently. Currently, oh, fuck man. After or do you that, mean, like, back, after back, that loss, she lost. <laughs> I meant, I meant, I meant like, do you mean like before she lost to Nunes? Because I don't think there's too much argument there. Dude, I mean that's only one loss though. To Nunes, come on. Yeah, but she lost. She got. I wish they would. The I only wish other that, person in contention. I wish they, that fight could happen again because I, I would have loved this well, thing to happen. Cyborg shouldn't have gone to Bellator. <laughs> yeah, but Bellator, the UFC should have bullied Cyborg. Cyborg shouldn't have. Okay, we're not. We're, there, there's that was such a I'm not thing. wrong there though, aren't I? No, 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 UFC should not have bullied Cyborg. Cyborg should not have made a you know chopped up a video of like a, a backstage conversation with Dana. That's what led her to getting canned. Well, that too, but you know what I mean. Yeah, so it was a complicated thing. Hey. And um, but regardless, though, I still think I don't think you can argue anybody about Nunez, honestly. Cyborg's up there though. I mean, she has to be too, then, right? Cyborg has to be too. She's well, Cyborg has to be probably number two, but I mean. It's a pretty big drop off after that. I mean, you can. I mean, who? I mean, who else rounds out the top five? I mean, you got you got Nunes one. Oh, and I think Shevchenko? everybody else. Huh? Shevchenko. Chev. Yeah, Shevchenko's probably there. So that's three, four, and five. Rousey. Rousey. I think mean, you can make a case for Rousey. Uh, she's in the up top there five for sure. It's, I don't it's, know. A, it's, it's on some pioneer shit though, but I no, I can't ex- really. I mean, she still she won. She still is the title defense record for the UFC. What the fuck, really? Yeah, she's, she defended the title like seven times, bro. That's badass. Fuck, you're right. People forget how good, si- not Summer, excuse me. People forget how good Rousey was. She beat, like, uh, Zingano. She beat, she beat some really good names. People act like she was, like, fucking Hoist Gracie. Like, she no, was, no, no, no. She, <laughs> hey, she was definitely that era of MMA for women, though. You can't deny it to an extent. Oh, yeah, for sure. She was the whole, she, to a degree. To a degree. Like, it was, she, it's a little above that, for sure. She beat Misha twice. She beat Zingano. She beat, Alexis know. Davis, she, she beat some very Carmouche. She beat a lot of good people, but so yeah, I, I see about four or five. I can't think of uh, Yolanda probably. Hmm, you think? I mean, it's it's tough. See, that's the problem. Like I said, you got the four pillars. I think of Shevchenko, Rousey, Cyborg, Nunez, and then it can be anybody for five. I think. Yeah, you're like, right. You can make I, think, I think I think five is still oh, coming. Rose. I think, fuck, see, my issue with Rose is I feel like Rose isn't fully there yet. Like, Rose has good wins. Rose has done impressive things in career. But it's like, and granted, this was to show the women for, the level for women, you know, obviously no hate. But I'm sure Rose can end up in that spot. This is, this is, yeah, I think so too. But this is off topic. Am I one of the things that, things that's crazy that Nunes lost one fight? Now she's already like 
she's Dude, dropped. Like, I, what do you mean, Josh? Kayla Harrison, five. <laughs> I think one day Kayla might be there, but not now. Yeah, I think is it just me or is it crazy? I think Nunez has dropped all the way down to number four pound for pound. Dang. For women. For women? Yeah, she's behind I believe she's behind Rose. Uh Shevchenko. Shevchenko's number one now. Let me hop on this. I need to see this. Um and I think she also dropped behind Pena. Which I guess makes sense, but okay, that makes sense because obviously she holds the title. But she's still champ at 145, and I'm not sure how she's behind Rose. <sighs> That's the weird one. Wait, wait, wait. Let me come, let me go look at this real quick. So this got updated. Great. So yes, it did. Uh, women's pound for pound. Uh, she's at third. She's at three. That's not bad. Oh, okay. Never mind. I thought it was four. Yeah, yeah. She's at three. So it's actually, like it's weird that, it's actually weird that Giuliano's at four and Amanda's at three, which what I guess makes fu- sense with the 145 title. So yeah, I guess I think it's weird that she – I still think Nunes is pound for pound number one. Really? Even with no belt? I mean, I feel like – But she's got a belt, though. Yeah. That's the problem. You could put her at two, though, I think. That would make more sense. Yeah, but the issue is that she's already – the whole point of pound for pound is, like, we see, like, how – if we're leveling their skills out and leveling out weight, you know what I mean? Like, that's kind of how pound for pound works. She's already beaten the number two, like, twice. So, well, I guess previously number, she beat number two. Like, she beat Jurchenko twice, I mean. But we're, it's, a, it's a weird, pound for pound's weird right now for women. Shit, um, Charles Oliveira's number five now, men's pound for pound. He's only behind Francis and Kanye. <laughs> Jesus. I know. And, but regardless, dude, um... I'm just moving on, Jeff Neal beating Santiago Ponzinibbio. I really don't have any fa- thoughts on this fight. I'm sorry the fact, it was just such a weird fight. I mean, it no was, one got it the vibe. Was, it, it was, a, you know, I'm a little far away from the mic. I'm sorry. It was, this This is one of the fights that disappointed me a little bit. No hate to these guys. Obviously, they, they came out, they did their thing. They performed the best of their ability. Uh, but I thought these guys were going to have a banger of a fight, man, and just let me wanting more. I mean, uh, I don't know if it was because Jeff Neal had the whole situation with the DUI, which then he came out and he's like, yeah, I fucked up, so I respected him for that. And then Santiago was obviously, you know, only one year back into the sport, you know, and he's gotten older. I mean, there's some factors there, but it, this, 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 this was kind of a disappointment for me. Obviously, no hate to them. They still came out and did their thing, but it, it was lacking for me. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. I fully agree. It was such a weird paced fight. I think that's my biggest thing. Like, it was very, very weird. Um, I mean, shout out to, you know, Jeff Neal for getting the win. Um, at least that's, that's solid for him, but dude, I feel like just his career has gone to such a, even with the win, man, it's still in a really bad position just by virtue of how the fight went, obviously the DUI and he's not the same guy that we saw, um, like going across his start of his career. Like he feels like, I feels like he's lost that aggression kind of, uh, maybe it's just my viewpoint, but regardless, at least he got back in the win column Pons though, man, I feel bad for Santiago Pons. For me, he's a big what if. He's a massive what if, dude. I mean, um, obviously he was out for three plus years. He nearly died of a staph infection, I believe, and got COVID and so many different things, man. Just what a sad situation. Um, at least he has the Baeza win and hopefully, I'm sure he'll win some more fights after this, but dude, what's he, 36 now? It's just a shame. It really is a shame. Um, but speaking of shames, uh, Kai Kara France knocking what? out Cody Garbrandt. Um, a beautiful women's. knockout, by the way. Beautiful knockout, four or five punch combination. Uh, people are, are saying the bigger issue with Cody is like, oh, his chin's gone, dude. No, I don't think his chin's gone. Long. He took some fucking bombs. No, he got, he the issue is that he's hittable, very, very hittable, dude. What do you think about? I was like, Car France, nice win for him. I don't think that no, I, don't, I don't think a whole lot of viewpoints going to change uh, coming okay. out of this fight at least you, on you him. You hear but, something that will really fuck you up? You hear yeah. something that really fuck you up? Go ahead. Dominic Cruz has won more fights. Since his loss to Cody Garbrandt, since Cody Garbrandt has beat Dominic Cruz. And Dominic Cruz Lord. was gone for, what, four years? Yes. And Cody has fought more fights than what Dom Cruz has fought since he's come back. Here's and he's the, won more fights. Dude, he needs isn't that death. Fuck, isn't that fucking insane, though, saying that out loud? Yeah, it's insane. He desperately needs to take a step back, dude. He really needs to. I'm surprised um, he didn't do that after the uh, Pedro Munoz loss, dude. I'm not going to lie to you. They gave him a Sunset, which, you know, you got to get credit to Sunset. Sunset is still a good guy. And yeah, and he was ranked top. He was ranked number five. And I, say, no. I don't know where he was ranked at the time. Yeah, he was ranked, yeah, number five, I believe. 
And then he went against on Sound and they're like, you just think, ah, fuck it, go fight Rob Font. <laughs> yeah, Rob Font, he's just, you know, coming off a huge knockout, bro. Like, just go ahead. I know you knew he died from COVID, like, a month ago, but here's Rob Font. Like, <laughs> yeah, that, they that gotta, was if he's coming back, he desperately needs to take time, uh, not even just to heal. I don't think, this, is, this is a bad fight, but, like, oh, go ahead. As I said, did you see he's been officially removed from all UFC rankings? As he should be, yeah. As he should be, yes, correct. No, no disrespect but to him, but he, it's the right choice. He needed to take a step back in competition. I thought it was something they needed to do after the Rob Font fight. I thought it's happened multiple times now. Um, but he needs to take a, take a step back in competition. Even even this fight, like, Kaikara France, what, ranked number six? Like, if hey, you Kai look... Kaikara France is bad motherfucker, though. I love the Kaikara France oh, renaissance yeah. after the, what, two, what is it? The, I guess it wasn't two losses, but he had the Brennan Moreno loss in between. Yeah. The Tyson Nam win and then the Brennan Rival loss, which that one was a devastating one. Oh, yeah, and I think it's, uh, you know, man, obviously, we'll see what happens, um, but, dude, it's just, uh, it's a rough one, like, he's five of six losses in, like, four of them were, like, brutal knockouts, man, like, his chin's not gone at all, it's just, he, he keeps on getting hit so much, like, he really needs to work on that, dude, um, I mean, it's just, I don't know what to do with him. I really don't know what to do with him. What I mean, did this, happen to that highly mobile guy who fought Dominic Cruz? He's literally fucking with well, Dominic Cruz in this fight, dude. Well, here's the thing, dude, is I, I've re- actually, I've watched the fight on a lot of occasions. That fight is a lot closer to what people remember. I actually encourage a lot of people to go back and watch it. It was really like one dominant round. But even during that fight, like, he was getting tagged a lot by Dom. It's just Dom doesn't put any weight behind his punches. And we'll talk about Dominic Cruz in a minute, but like, I, part of me wonders if we never have this situation if Don Cruz just sat on his punches more. Like, he got hit a lot in that fight, dude. And I feel like all this remembered is, like, that fourth round where he styled on him. Um, so it's, it's hard. Yeah. That, that's a, he styled on him hard, but that's a fight I think people should go back and rewatch. Because outside Sean of that Malley one shit. round, outside, <laughs> outside of that one round, like, I think it was still, like, 48 47 on the cards. Like, it's a, it's a, it's a fight that's kind of forgotten the way how it went a lot. But it was, but it was a clear win, though, for. It was a, it was a clear, it was yeah. a clear win, but. I think we'll tend to forget, like, that was not, like, Max Holloway versus, like, Brian Ortega or something, you know what I mean? Cal- Calvicator. Um, you're a Calvicator. Like, that's I'll, not I'll go my extreme. <laughs> yeah, but regardless, dude, that's still crazy to me that he's only won once since then. Damn shame. But um, speaking of dudes that are, like, uh, honestly, I thought this is a fight we're going to see next if, if Cody would have won, but Sean O'Malley knocking out Rulon Pavia, um, breaking into the rankings, now number 13. That's what uh, yeah. Dude. You know, we thought Pavia could stood, stay in there. He's only been finished once. It was via a cut. He gets knocked the fuck out in four minutes and 42 seconds, dude. What a performance by Sean O'Malley. What if that's about him moving forward? I mean, he continues to show his greatness, man, right? I mean, he's doing all the right things when it comes to the decisions he's making as far as who he's fighting, when he's fighting, and how much he's getting paid for, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, obviously, I think he's in a, they're going to negotiate his contract out, and he's going to – Get more money and get those big big name fights now and uh obviously look for a title. I mean, dude, he is a he is a, a big personality right now. I mean, he he has the potential to be a massive star. And he already is kind of a star without being at a high I wouldn't I wouldn't say not at a high level, but not fighting the highest of the high yet. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, it's the sky's the limit with this kid. And like I said, dude, it's crazy to think he was gone for a few years there and he could have even more fights on his record right now. But I used to be so bothered by it now. But now that he's back and he's active, I'm, 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 I'm so happy now. You know, it's, it's good to see him fighting and being active. And he's still so young, man. I remember it used to freak me out so much back then because I was like, dude, it's just going to go by so quick. And now that I'm actually living through it, I'm kind of like, okay, it's, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, and I think this fight is, uh, you know, a dude, like, I saw a lot of people trash him on Pavia. This, for me, this is a, this is a big test. Which is, which is completely unacceptable, by the way. People have must have never seen this guy fight before that day. Yeah, cause, Ron Pavi is a motherfucker, man. He beat O'Malley's teammate, right? Oh, this. by the way, I'm gonna send you something since we're talking about O'Malley that I saw on a Twitch chat real quick. Uh, we won't, you don't have to react to it right now. I'm gonna send it to you over Snapchat, but I thought it was fucking comedy. Or you can, we're, we can talk about it on air if you want me to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let me go ahead and, um, it's comedy, dude. You'll love yeah, it. let me just go ahead and take a quick look about at what English it looks like. A, it looks like a copy pasta too, dude, which makes it even better. And it's loading. 
Should've You're a moron in. if you think Sean Knight is a tough striker in the UFC. He loses in a wash any top bantamweight. What a, what a dumbass. If, did, you if read the, only, did you read the first part, though? Which yes. Says, I've been watching MMA for 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, dude, uh, I, I gotta say, dude, like, Sean O'Malley's the real deal, guys. Uh, you really gotta, you gotta hop on board now, uh, cause Will and Pavia, very good. Get on the good. train, get on the Hosma train, get on this train, get on the Kaikara train. I don't, train. I don't think O'Malley's gonna be champion or anything like that, but dude, the way he just washed Pavia out, I mean, he's, he's good, dude. Like, he's really good, and, uh, people need to realize that. Oh, yeah, it's a fact. But, now, moving on down to the undercard, um, I think we'll probably just go in order, honestly. Um, Josh Emmett defeating Dan Ige, dude. Weird fight, weird fight. How'd you score that one? Another one, dude. Another one that kind of left me, uh, same thing with the Jeff Neon Chicago, where I'm like, I expected a lot more. I thought, I thought like, this fight was going to be fight of the night, Josh. I thought these guys were going to come out and bang. Julian Lane's out. Let me bang, bro. Platinum pussy. Call him out. <laughs> <laughs> did you see that video, by the way? Oh, yeah, I did. Okay, yeah, you need to get the reference for a second. It took me a minute. It took me a minute, yeah. <laughs> You're like, whoa, what is he talking about? When he hit him right in the face with that, like, <laughs> he threw that shit at him. Yeah, dude, that oh shit my was God. comedy. Yeah, dude, but yeah. That, dude, weird fight, weird fight, honestly. Yeah, no, it, 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 we, we talked about it that night, too. Like I said, it left, left me wanting more, but Josh number one, I mean, I didn't see an issue with that. I, I, it's It's nothing crazy to me, you know what I mean? Yeah. I thought, a fight that, I thought it was a fight that kind of lacked a little bit, but they came out, did their thing, and the right guy won. For sure. I thought Dan was landing the cleaner punches, but Josh had a lot more on him. So, um, you know, weird fight. Good for Josh Emmett, getting the win after all of his uh, setbacks and injuries and stuff. So good for him. Um, moving on, the highlight of the card to me personally, or one of the highlights, Dominic Cruz. Has dude. to be the highlight of the card, too, up there with uh, Juliana Pena, dude. For sure. After everything that this man has been through, to go out there, and obviously he picked up a win before this against Casey Kenny, but I feel like it really flew under the radar just because Casey Kenny. I mean, I think he was top 15 at the time, but it wasn't a huge win. Um, but, dude, just Dom Cruz, 36 years old, so many injuries, multiple ACL tears, multiple MCL tears, um, in both legs, by the way. Uh, just all that's gone on, he's still finding ways to evolve his game and beat top 10 dudes. Pedro, he beats Pedro Munoz, fight of the night. What a performance by Dominic Cruz, dude. I mean, all the all the drama during fight week with him in D.C., and he goes out there and puts on a performance after getting, honestly, it looked like he was out in round one. It looked like he was about to get knocked out. It that like was scary. Did. It looked like he, like, crumpled up by the fence. I thought, oh, shit, yeah, it's done. He recovered. And, dude, just what a performance, dude. What a what a, what a performance. And, and especially in round two and round three, just the combination he was putting together. It looks like he's sitting down on his punches more. He teed off, dude. He, he entered the off. matrix there for a second. He really did, dude. I mean. You uh, said WEC never die. WEC God, never die. He's still only 36 years old, which is insane. I mean, he's only a year older than Pedro Munoz. That's yeah. insane to me. Yeah, um, great matchmaking here, honestly. They did a good job. Great matchmaking, dude. I, I love that fight. I have, a, I have a good question, though. I have a good yeah. question for you. And. Uh, my answer may or may not bother you, but who had the more impressive performance against Pedro Munoz? Jose Aldo or Dominic Cruz? Ooh. I don't know. Um, I, I'm going to say Dom Cruz, dude. Despite despite getting dropped twice in that first round, I think Dom Cruz looked good in those last two, man. You really did. It comes down to what you value more. Do you value it was the all, And the Aldo was a five-rounder, right? No, it was a three-round. It was a three round. Okay, I was, okay. I was just—I I don't even remember. Yeah, I mean, it depends on what you value. Honestly, do you value Dom Cruz getting himself off the canvas more, or do you value Jose just dominating the fight more? Uh, I mean, in terms of dominance, Jose, but in terms of what impressed me, Dom. Yeah. Because I didn't expect Dom to just—he outside of the knockdowns, that's the only thing that went Pedro Munoz's way. At least he caught him once. Even Man, in that round one. People want to see all these one other chain. fights. I just want to see Aldo versus Cruz. Just give it to me, Dana. The WEC super fight, bro. It may happen. We'll dude, see. fuck it. Pull out the WEC belt out of retirement, dude. Let's make a new title. We can have the BMF belt. Why the fuck can't we have throwback belts? The fuck? That'd be dope. On a Thursday. Throwback Thursday card. That'd be dope. Yeah. Uh, but, dude, moving on. Because you spent, like, we spent 40 minutes on this card. By the way, time's flying by. That's okay. Um, <laughs> Dai Tuivasa knocking out Augustus Sakai. What a performance by him. Um, And then our boy Jordan Wright, dude. 
Like, yeah, this out, dude, though. he just comes to bang, dude. He's not going to make top of team. He's not going to win a title. This dude just comes to bang, dude. He really does. I mean, all of his UFC fights, in fact, all of his fights in general, they've all, they've never even reached a third round. Every single one of his 15 contests have either led to him getting knocked out or him knocking out or submitting somebody. Respect. That's insane. Just um, you wait, Josh. Just you wait till he becomes ranked one day, and you remember this comment being made. <laughs> okay. I can see him breaking into the rankings, just not... What weight class is he at? Is he 185? Yeah, he's 185. That's a tough weight class, but that's not impossible, though, to break into 185. I feel like that's... I feel like that weight class is very open to break into. It is. Yeah. They need some depth there right now, honestly. They do. We'll see what happens. And speaking about depth... I don't yeah, know speaking of know. depth, Andre Muniz submitting <laughs> Eric Andrews. Angel, you called I, it. I called it, dude. I remember, I kid you not, Josh. I'm sitting there with uh, our friend Philip, and I'm like, yeah, he's about to submit this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he proceeds to submit Eric Andrews in the first round, dude. Fucking beautiful. Same situation as last time. Almost. Not, not exactly. Uh, yeah, this guy's the real deal, dude. I mean, he's gonna break into the rankings here soon. I'm a little sad because his opponent, for me, was a more interesting matchup. For obvious reasons. Yeah. But, hey man, I'm sure they'll meet up eventually. That guy's probably gonna break into the rankings too. And honestly, for 185, that's gonna be awesome. Mm hmm. For sure, dude, and just honestly, a great performance by him. I expect him to beat Eric Anders, but in the past that he did it, because Eric Anders, you know. He was quick. He was quick. Eric Anders is a lot better on That's the first time he's ever been submitted, too. I mean, he's not bad on the ground by any means. Who's next? Um, that's who's actually, next? That's actually a good question. I didn't even think. That's the fighter ranked guy next, right? Does he take on, like, a Brad Tavares type? He, I believe he's ranked uh, 13th, right? Oh, I'd now like he's to up with him. I'd like to, honestly, and it's a weird matchup because they're both rising up. Nasr Dean Imavov, give me that shit. Give me that shit all day, dude. That sounds like an awesome fight. I don't care that, like, they're both rising up. Is like, there that sounds else? Like a Outside of him, I'm just curious. Outside of him that I'd like to see? Yeah. Um, the issue is there's a, there's a lot of the top guys are, are fighting right now. Hall, Uriah is apparently going to fight Darren. Kelvin's oh, really? going to fight. Um, who's Kelvin going to fight? Oh, my Kelvin God. was He's in a weird sh- spot, dude. I Which believe Kelvin just had a fight booked recently. I just don't know against who. This makes sense. Yeah, I mean, Jack's going to fight Sean Strickland. Paulo Costa's moving up. Brunson and Kennedy are booked. Vittori's not booked, but I think Vittori Muniz is way too big of a gap, and Whitaker's fighting on Sonya. Mm-hmm. Dang, who's Vittori? So very, I don't know. He's in a weird place. Yeah, a lot of these guys are in a weird place. Yeah, but, you know. Especially Vittori, because he fought for... The, he's fought the title guy twice now. Yeah. But, dude, uh, just moving on, uh, Aaron Blanchfield, dude, I knew she was good. And uh, somebody, I've talked about her for a long time. She's so young. She's 22 years old, dude. I've I've covered the majority of, of the fights of her, her career. Like, I've been there in person. Yeah. Even I was – and same for Miranda Maverick, who she fought. I was so shocked by this one. Because Aaron Blanchfield has always been good on the mat. I mean, she's a former um, – an Eddie Bravo Invitational champion. She's a black belt in jiu-jitsu, but, dude, she's always had trouble getting the takedown. And Miranda Maverick, she lacks a little bit in the jiu-jitsu, but she's always been – she's good on the ground, and she's always been a dominant wrestler, dude. She got taken down at will. Uh, Aaron Blanchfield, I, I mean, she looks like a, like a future champion, dude. Like, she looked so dominant. She got a little and, love. Huh? She got a lot of love after that performance. Like oh, that. for sure, for sure. I'd like to see her, honestly, fight Tracy Cortez next. Um, they had a, they had fought in Invicta, and I thought she got robbed. Tracy uh, was scheduled to fight someone. I forgot what it was. She had to withdraw. I wonder if they're going to run it back with that opponent, or if they're going to go in a different re- direction. I know Blanchfield wants to fight Tracy Cortez next. I was cor- I was a uh, cage side for that one. And I, I'm sure I they'll fight eventually. I mean, yeah. if they fought before, they're going to fight eventually. You know, it's a little grudge match there. For sure. Well, well, it's crazy though. I was going to mention this before. You know, before we get off it. I mean, yeah. Some random Maverick who was there was actually supposed to be Macy Barber in there. Yeah, that would have been even worse because Miranda Maverick has a really, really good wrestling base. The fact that she got taken down so many times was surprising to me. Um, I think Macy would have gotten fucked up. <laughs> Honestly, Macy I was like, "Dang, maybe it's good I didn't end up being there." It's good. It's good. It, it was kind of it was kind of justice for Miranda, right? Because obviously she had gotten robbed in her, in her last fight against Macy, and she got yeah. I mean, in. yeah. At least in this one, she actually lost. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not not good for her, but obviously this time she had a legitimate loss. So. She can come out of this and hopefully learn something. For sure, for sure. Um, 
moving on down the card, I think this is, I mean, there's a couple other fights we can obviously highlight, but I think this is the last one we should probably spend time on, just kind of keep the show rolling on. Ryan Hall, dude. Let's go, champ. Let's go, champ. Uh, I love this man. I really, really do. 36 years old, and he's finally, he's saying he wants to stay active. He said he wants to fight five times next year. Holy fuck. Kevin Holland. He's, he's had so many fights fall through, and he's just ready to fully go, dude. And I love it. And Derek Minner, full and, credit. And it's so sad that he's always been game. Just everybody, just everybody's been scared. He was down to fight Josh Emmett like two years ago, bro. I mean, he he's had a lot of fights. Um, you know, they just couldn't find somebody for him. Uh, he tried to fight Lamas, and that ended up getting canceled. Like I said, he tried to fight Josh Emmett, that got canceled. Ega got canceled, and he he fought Ilya Tapura. He is just a brutal matchup for him. He broke oh, his yeah. hand. It was good to see him getting back in there. Obviously, this is not as dominant of a win uh, as I would like to see. Match, but it, but it, was, it was a fun matchup, though. Yeah, it was a fun performance, I think. I mean, it was, like I said, it wasn't dominant, either, but it was... I had a lot of fun watching that fight, dude. Like, honestly, you, yeah. you, we talk about how sometimes we don't, like... Well, I don't know, let's say us, but some people don't like watching ground ground fighting, but in this case, I thought it was actually, like... At least for me, I, I really genuinely was invested into it. For sure, there was a lot of scrambles. There was a lot of um, submission attempts on Ryan's end. It was a really fun fight, honestly. But um, regardless, man, I think it's about time to move on this card. Regardless, the fact that we just spent we spent nearly an hour on that card, best one of the year, I think, top to bottom. For me, before this, it was UFC 267, but I think this might have surpassed it. Um, what card was that again? Out of curiosity, I can't remember. That was uh, Glover and uh, Jan. Oh, yeah, and, that was a yeah, that was a good one. It's close, but, you know, regardless. Yeah, right. It's close. Um, moving on to this weekend's card, UC Vegas 45. They're also, um, I don't want to say they're stacking this card, because they're not, right? But as far as Friday nights go, one of the better ones uh, of the year, and they're closing it out on a bang. This is the last UC card of the year. Main event, heavyweights, boys. Derek Lewis. Fucking know it. Coming off of his loss to Cyril Gaon, still the UFC knockout king. Uh, it's going to be facing off against Chris Dawkins, one of the greatest prospects in the division. And he's won four straight UFC fights all via knockout, my guy. What do you think about this one? Obviously a banger, dude. Obviously, the you know, he officially all into MMA. I guess not te- I guess he did quit his job as a cop, but you know what I mean. He, yeah. He it's he uh, he'll return someday, just not now, right? But yeah, officially, nope, no more, no more police work. 100 percent into MMA. No more dividing his life between being a fighter and being a police officer. Obviously, I'm sure his community will miss him. But uh, hey, man, he's he's chasing his dreams, and you never want to see so you never want to stop anybody from chasing what their dreams are, right? So works out beautifully for him. But the only sad thing is that his dreams are gonna get broken for my boy, the Black Beast. You know, I never figured against Terry Lewis. Let's go, champ. <laughs> Let's go, champ, indeed, dude. Uh, I think this is a terrible match for Chris Dawkins. I think Chris Dawkins, you know, there's a lot of interesting fights they could do with him. And then they're just giving him Derek Lewis, who I'm sure is going to be hungry after that gone fight. And yeah, I think this is a bad matchup for Chris Dawkins, dude. I'm on your side. Derek Lewis, the Black Beast. I got him via finish this weekend, my guy. Oh, I really always. do. There's, that's the only way. What, what do you think? Derek Lewis, second round submission? The baddest blue belt in Texas? The baddest blue belt in Texas. Yeah, I don't, I mean, Chris Dawkins is a black belt in Jiu Jitsu, but I, I've never seen enough out of him to, cause there's black belts and there's black belts. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, and I, even if he's good on the ground, I've never seen him in the wrestling capacity have him keep Lewis on the mat. I mean, there's um, a, there, there's a roadmap, right? I feel like with Derek, the body shots are always a thing. It doesn't respond to him very very well and yeah, but you gotta you gotta be a, a big longer guy to do that like a volkov or a gong that, that's the issue that's the issue i mean it's not impossible you could do it with you know front kicks maybe some kicks to the body but even then eric could catch one of those and he ends up on top of you and that's nice. a heavy heavy dude and once he gets on top and those hammers start landing it's over yeah, and I don't think that he honestly – Derek Lewis very rarely respects somebody's power. I mean, he you got to beat him with volume, you know what I mean? And I really don't think that that's not – I don't think that's going to happen here, dude. I'm going to go and take Derek Lewis via I knockout. Think if, I think if Chris Dawkins had like Tanner Bowser's speed, <laughs> I, I think it would be a different different situation. I kid you not. Like, I'm not trying to be funny. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, no, no. I see what your point. Tanner Bowser, by the way. Future that's, champ. Future champ, I love that no, guy. I, I, no, I love him too. He, he is—he's incredibly fast. But, but dude, it's—I was going to mention—I was going to get into this. I mean, Derek, yeah. 
there, Chris Dawkins is like the opposite parallel of Tom Asmo. Tom Asmo was like, I'm gonna take my time, I'm gonna build up the ring. Chris Dawkins is like, fuck that. I remember he's calling out Stipe after like his, not this last win, but the win before that. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's like, he, fuck this, I'm not here for a long time. Yeah, he, he wanted to get that quick and, I mean, dude, I mean, if he does it against Derek, fuck man, he's right up there in the mix for that title fight at some point. Like, he wouldn't be far from it, you know what I mean? For sure. I think he'd probably need one more and that would be it. Yeah, obviously Jones is going to be in the, supposedly Jones is coming in next year, fighting at heavyweight, finally, after, uh, after Ghana and Nganu in, uh, January, which, that's crazy, that's literally next month, Josh, like, I holy know. fuck, <laughs> baddest man on the planet right there. Yeah, and then we also got the trilogy with, with Figgy and Moreno, that would be, that, that's going to be, an, that's, a, that's a great card, honestly, top to bottom, but yeah, oh, yeah. um, yeah, this is a very interesting fight, I think, him trying to rise up as quickly as he as he is is admirable, but I don't think it's going to go his way. Um, yeah, I got I got Lewis in the main event, but I'm honestly as much as I like the main event, I'm honestly more excited for the co-main. I'm not going to lie, dude. I'm really not going to lie. Um, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, who recently said he wants to be the oldest fighter in UFC history, uh, he signed a six fight deal. I saw so that. What the fuck? Gonna here, he's going to be here for a while. He's 38 years old. Coming off the loss to Gilbert Burns before that, I and mean, that was a close fight. We were, he was talking about fighting for a title. Facing off against Bilal, remember the name, Muhammad, um, who's on a hell of a run, man. This is an excellent, excellent fight. What do you think about this one? I mean, it's a banger. Obviously, we talk about it every time. Wonder Boy is stylistically just a nightmare for everybody, dude. I mean, that, that karate style, that karate stance is just uh, something uh, – that's a pain to get through and, and those kicks, man, are fucking brutal and the, and, and the variety of kicks you can throw too at any which point. I mean, that front leg, man, is, it's gonna fuck you up, man. It's gonna give you a hard night. It's gonna give you a hard night. Bilal man, we mentioned him and he's on a crazy run. But, uh, I don't think Bilal's gonna be able to get it done, Josh. I'm just gonna get into it right now. I don't think he's gonna be able to get it done. I, I don't think, I think he's gonna have trouble taking down Wonder Boy. Cause if you're gonna, if you're gonna beat Wonder Boy, I think it's that way. Cause he's not gonna beat Wonder Boy in the stand up, regardless if Wonder Boy is 39 or 40 years old. Mm. I was going to say it right now. Uh, and Wonderboy has a style that I know he mentioned. He wants to be the oldest guy in the UFC history. I think the oldest to ever fight in the UFC was Ron Van Cleef. He fought, I think he was 51. He fought Hoist Grace in UFC 4, um, which is a fun little trivia for you. Um, that guy had an interesting fuck life. I know he put out a book, which I've been meaning to read. He was, he was like a stuntman. He was like a fucking karate guy. He was an actor. He did a bunch of shit. And he fought Hoist when he was 51. So, he's 78 now. And still yeah. alive. I just looked it up so, at a cursor. Yeah, he's the old fighter. I believe he was 51, if you want to go and fact check that. But yeah. Um, yeah, that's a, it's a fun little trivia for the day. He'd need, he need to pass him. So that's 13 years from now. But Wonder Boy, if there's anybody who can do it, it'd be him. He, he has a style that's going to grace very, like, age very, very well. Um, not because, like, a lot of karate dudes kind of, like, rely on speed. Wonder Boy's not that dude. He's going to out technique you all fucking day. Um, he's great with counters. He, he's. He's lost a little bit of his takedown defense. He's lost a little bit of his looseness, but he's still he's very very good. Um, and I got him in this one too, dude. I like I like Bilal a lot actually. I really really do. Not in terms of like his style, but in terms of like just like a human being. Um, he's a very funny you guy to follow on Twitter. I like his mm-hmm. podcast a lot. Um, he's a good personality. Really, he's a very good personality. Good tech. Good analyst as well. I just think it's a bad matchup for him, dude. I think they could have given him so many different guys, but this is just going to be a rough one for him. I'm gonna, especially in a three rounder. If it's five rounds, maybe I'd feel different. Yeah, I think um, five rounder would be a little different too. Yeah, but I'm gonna go and I'm gonna go and take uh, Steven Wonderboy Thompson. Get the dub, man. And if he wins this one, not far away from a title. That's the awesome thing about Wonderboy, man. I he, which, I really want to see crazy, him, which is crazy after the Gilbert Burns loss. I want to see him get one more shot. I really do. Not because I think he beats Usman, but because I think it'd be an interesting stylistic matchup. I really do. Um, I mean, I just, I think it'd be a very interesting match to watch that happen. Regardless, dude, uh, this is a very, this is a very fun card. Uh, what are some of the other fights you're going to go and highlight down the building on this one? I mean, man, we can, we can go down one, man. Amanda Lemos, Angela Hill, fun, fun fight there with the ladies. Amanda Lemos, I mean, she's a girl. I think she's something, man. I think she, she, she might be special. Um, mm. I, I don't know if it's set in stone yet. I think, I think, she, I think, I mean, I'm not going to. You know, obviously, I don't know we're not going to be a prediction. Sir. I think she's going to probably beat Angela Hill, dude. And in a strawweight division that is very competitive, and I think she could beat some of the names above her. I mean, I could see her fighting for a title maybe not too long from now, or maybe in the next year and a half or so. It just depends how things kind of work out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she got that rare punching power for a uh, 
Especially at straw weight. Dude. Especially at straw weight. Like for straw weight, like you, I mean, you, as 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 you go up in weight, you know, we we kind of see more women's fighters have power. Straw weight, dude. She gets seven knockouts, and as much as I love um, Margot Mantra Ruiz, I thought it was an early stoppage, but she's gonna get knocked the fuck out if they didn't stop it when they did. Um, so it's just, uh, you know, I, I'm a huge fan of Amanda Lemos, and it's Angel Hill is tough though, dude. If there's anybody gonna put an end to this hype train, it's gonna be her. Um, but she's had a really rough goal of it too, dude. That, that Tisha Torres fight was so disappointing, and she, got, I thought she won her, she beat Ashley Yoder, obviously, but then she lost in split decisions and back-to-back fights, and I thought she won both of those, dude. She's had a rough go. She's had a very, very rough go. Um, and I, I'm not sure how well this one's gonna go for her either. I think it's a very toss-up matchup. Very, 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 very close one. But, um, dude, the, the fight that I'm honestly really excited for, and uh, we're gonna skip past some of the other matchups we're gonna come back to, but, Carlos Diego Fajera, Taking on Mataz Gamrat. That's a banger, dude. That's, a that's bang- an absolute banger. That's a banger, but that's such a hard fight for Diego, if I'm being honest. It is, especially with the weight issues he's been having. Um, but, dude, Gamrat, if he can get ba- get past him, I think he's going to be the real deal. I really oh, think I think Gamrat's already the real deal, dude. No, I mean, like, but in terms of, like... Uh, yeah. I mean, this was cemented. Y- yeah, that's what I meant. And he's not but. bad on the ground. I mean, actually, I'm not going to say that. He's good on the ground. I mean, he's been to ADCC. He only... He got eliminated by Gary Tonin. I mean, if that shows his level, then there you go. Exactly. He's very good on the mat. <laughs> and um, he has some hands. He Boy, does. He's got some hands. And dude, his, his only losses in the UFC, dude, and it was in his debut, and it was a split decision. Dude, this guy could be 20-0 and 0 right now. It's actually fucking insane. And I thought he won that fight. There you go. Um, But, yeah, dude, I mean, that's going to be an awesome fight. Rafael Sunsau against Ricky Simone. Banger. Great fight. Great, great, great fight. Big test for Ricky, though. Like, finally, after he had those two lice, what is it, two losses, who did he lose to? He lost to uh, Uriah, which I remember I picked Uriah, because that was his return fight. <laughs> and uh, the Ralph Font loss, which, you know, both nothing to be ashamed of there. Obviously, the, the Uriah one probably stings a little bit, because, damn, I could have, could have, you know, could have taken that one. Which, by the way, if I remember correctly, that Rob Font Ricky Simone fight was a banger, if I remember correctly. So... Yeah. No shame in losing that one either. Uh, it did get fight of the night, so you're probably right. I just looked at it right okay. now. All right, cool. Yeah, but, yeah, but um, yeah, ever since that though, picked up some wins. Brian Kelleher, Ray Borg, another one in there that I can't remember. I mean, he's fighting Rafael Sensa, who's damn near forty, but still, he's still a good guy. He is. Um, I like to see how Sensa does against somebody that's not super top level, because um, he's been fighting the top of the top for so long, and I don't think he's top five anymore. Obviously, he lost to Marias. He lost to Sandhagen. The Sandhagen fight was close, remember correctly? He's twelve. And then he, he's twelve. Okay, yeah. And then he's twelve. So, um, but he's only ever fought like top guys. Obviously, the Garbrandt fight he lost via knockout, but that was a close fight until he got caught. So, um, we'll see what happens, dude. I think it's an awesome fight. And then we got to give it up, dude, for the old, the old men, Cubs, Swanson, Darren Elkins. This could be a fucking banger. Two staples of the fe- featherweight division. Thirty-eight, thirty-seven. I'm shocked these two have never fought. Um. But yeah, they're gonna open up the main card, and that's an awesome fight, dude. Yeah, I would love to see Clay Guida, Leonardo Santos again. I fucking essentially, love yeah, essentially. Um, I mean, as far as the undercard goes, outside like the main card fights, Gerald Mearshart is back. Uh, he's making a a good like claim. If he wins this one, for maybe like I'm not sure if comeback fight of the year is a thing, but like he'd have three wins in 2021, and I believe he would have been an underdog in every single one, like. Especially the Marado fight. I that one believe- surprised the fuck out of me. He ended that hype train so quick. I still can't believe he won that fight. Yeah, Jim Mishar, man. What a... Just a, such a tough dude, dude. Honestly. Very tough guy. Um, I mean, the undercard outside of that, it's, this is a couple of interesting names. Macy Chaisong's huh? fighting on this. She's a weirdly placed on this, by the way. Yeah, Macy Chaisong. That fight just got moved up to women's featherweight, by the way. Oh. Well, I don't fun. know what the issue is, but... From what I've heard, they're moving it up 10 pounds against uh, Rico Pennington. Uh, I think they've made this on – well, no. I think someone lost their opponent. Raquel lost her opponent. Alvia, she had a knee injury. Oh, so Macy's coming in at short notice? I'm assuming she's on relatively short notice. You know yeah, I mean? she's, she's a big 135er, so I guess it makes sense then. Yeah. Uh, I do want to bring up one weird match, mate, or one weird match here. Uh, yeah. Bar- Barcelos, Josh, he lost to Timor – Vyalev, I can't pronounce his last name very well. Regardless, though, these are two guys who are kind of like, in my opinion, like on their way to being like highly ranked bantamweights. Obviously, I didn't expect them to get matched up as early as they did. Two more ended up winning the, ended up getting a decision. 
And uh, now Barcelos is fighting, uh, I think, I believe, USC newcomer Victor Henry. He's 21 and 5. This is throwing me off a little bit. Do you know anything about Victor Henry? I mean, he's riding a nice little win streak there for a bit, had a loss in uh, 2020, and then picked up a win at the start of uh, late 2021. I don't know. I think I know he's coming in as a replacement, but it, it's throwing me off. Like, is this a guy that has kind of mixed it up outside of the U.S. and I just don't know who it is? Like, do you know anything about him? Yeah, Victor Henry's pretty damn good. Um, I know that he trained with Josh Barnett or Josh Barnett's like his head coach or something along those lines. He's called Pancrase, I know. Um, he actually had a bit of a rough go on Pancrase, actually, if I remember correctly, back in like 20. 16, 2017, I believe. I know he's fought in Ryzen. He's a pretty damn good dude, actually. Um, very good grappler. He he's pretty well rounded everywhere. So yeah, he he's he's actually a signing I was pretty happy to see. That's dope. He finally he's, he's getting his time. He is, and uh, you know it's funny. He, I know that he went ahead and uh, there was like a fight announcement whenever that fight got reported, and it was like Victor Henry making like a uh, like a crazy face or something. And um, Josh Burnett, like he commented something on, I was like, I told him not to make that fucking face. He's gonna follow him forever. <laughs> like, yeah. like something really like, like he like looked, looked like an absolute like idiot in like the picture he took for like I don't remember which promotion it was. And Josh was like, I told him not to do it. Like, <laughs> some funny story along those lines. Uh, but yeah, dude, he he's a nice signing. He, he's he's a very nice signing. That's but I'm happy to regardless, Mariano Barcelos is a you know, he's a motherfucker. So he's gonna. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be a tough fight for him. But yeah, dude. Uh, overall, pretty pretty interesting card. And I think the last one I kind of want to go and highlight uh, your boy Jordan Levitt's back. Uh, yeah, I guess Matt I Sales. What do you think about that one? I'm excited, dude. I mean, he had his loss. Obviously, didn't go his way. I mean, it wasn't a, it wasn't a terrible loss. Obviously, not a good one either. He ended up getting that a uh, nice shot of him where uh, Claudio was on, had his uh, was sitting on top of his head with his butt. I mean, it was it's kind of comedy. Not gonna lie. He ended up posted up. I think he posted on his Instagram. He's like, he's like, this is when you know you fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. It was good. Yeah, he's still an interesting prospect. I believe he's still eight and one. I believe nine and one. Some along those lines. Um, so yeah, dude, still, still an interesting guy, and he's opening up the cards. So that'll be fun. But you know, Angel, we spent uh, you know about an hour or so on MMA, and there's still there's some boxing going down this week, and uh, it's it's a man we we followed his career for quite a while. And he's back. We've been Jake, there since the start, Josh. No one, no one has been there since the start like we have. Let's be honest. That's actually pretty true. That's actually pretty true because we followed the. Uh, we've, you know, we're from that era of YouTube boxing. I've, been, I've, been, I've watched the very first fight. I've been here since the first fight. So one hundred percent. You bought the pay per view. I did for so, ten bucks. Exactly. So here we go, man. Um, Jake, the problem child, Paul. He is once again facing off. Against Tyron, the chosen one, Woodley. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Tom Fury pulled out of the fight due to a broken rib 12 days ago. On 12 days' notice, Tyron Woodley, the former UFC welterweight champion who fought to a split decision against Jake in August, he's back in. He's back in, man. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, I wrote a preview for this earlier this week, so if you guys follow me on Twitter, you probably already know my thoughts about this fight, but... Angel, I'm going to go pass it to you, man. What do you think about this fight? Um, obviously, there's, an under, there's a couple of undercard fights I think we'll probably talk about in a moment and, and what can happen possibly after this one. But, dude, what do you think about this fight? What do you think about uh, Tyron coming in a short notice? I mean, good for Tyron, right? He obviously had a uh, kind of that tattoo, supposedly. I don't know if he did or didn't. There's a lot of speculation there. and You know, the, the, it was promised that he that he, there'd be a rematch because that tattoo was gone. And, you know, it's kind of poetic justice. It, it, he, he ended up getting a rematch, right? And he wanted a rematch, so. Well, he got it again. Obviously, for me, some interest was lost because I'm like, I was genuinely excited about the Tommy Fury fight. I really was, actually. I had some interest there. I was curious to see what happened. Now we get this, which I'm kind of like, okay, let's see what happens. I mean, this is, I think for, does it sound, this only benefits Jake, I think, Josh, to an extent. Because uh, obviously it just gives him more uh, more in, more in ring time, you know, more time to, to see things, more times to to make an adjustment, more time, more things to go back into the lab and be like, okay, I'm fucking up here, I'm not doing this right. And for a young guy, that's invaluable, and especially doing as many professional rounds as he is, and th- that he could be doing if he doesn't put Woodley out. Uh, he's been there before, which is obviously another thing that he's going to get to experience is obviously rematching a guy and and going through that experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going into it. I think it's going to be an interesting matchup again. Uh, 
but I mean, I'm going to keep, I'm going to pick Paul Josh until I, I don't see when that I think he could possibly win. I mean, he's going to have to fight someone that is very clearly like just eons above him, which I mean, in a sense that is Woodley, but I'm going to keep picking Paul. Mm hmm. That's understandable, dude. Obviously, Tyron is coming in here on, on, uh, very short notice from, I know he had a fight that was, um, I don't know if it's official for January. I know they were talking about him fighting Dan Hardy in January in a boxing match in the UK. And that obviously didn't end up happening because he's stepping in for this one. Um, I think it's a compelling fight, dude. And, you know, I, I spoiled it, obviously. I hate, like, kind of talking about the stuff whenever I've been having to do, like, boxing previews and stuff, but I, I'm picking Tyron Woodley. Um, obviously we don't count boxing, like, as our pick stuff, which I believe we'll actually do next week, next year. Um. I'm pretty sure we'd both be positive, though, outside of the tail female one. Though. We would be. We'd still be positive. I, I, I don't know what exact our record would be, but it, we'd be positive. Not um, very high. I'd yeah. probably be less than 10, to be honest with you. Yeah, but, um, you know, regardless, dude, I'm gonna pick Tyron Woodley. I think this is a fight, and it comes down to a lot of different things, a lot of different factors, and I went back and rewatched their, their first fight, and, for me, it just comes down to this. Tom Woodley should have won that fight, which is funny because, like, you know, you always say, like, oh, uh, you know, Jake should lose this fight. He sh- he really should have lost that fight against Tom Woodley. If Tom Woodley went with even, t- you know, 10% more activity, he he wins the fight. From round three onwards, Jake was on a wobbly legs. Even before he got – even before he took the huge right hand that uh, should have been called a knockdown in the fourth round, he he was on wobbly legs before that because he was gas, man. And he had nothing but outside of like a, you know, a little pitter powder jab to the body. And Tyron, he was the frozen one. He did nothing. <laughs> I think, I, I think he realizes at this point in his career, like, dude, Tyron's never been a legacy guy, right? He's always been a money guy. And I, I legitimately believe that Jake put including a 500,000 knockout bonus, like in his contract is actually going to make him fight better. Like, I truly believe that, dude. Um, because at this point, like, uh, you know, Legacy doesn't put food on your table. Are you excited okay. for the Bugatti, Josh? I, I thought it was really funny. They asked him, like, uh, d- during the, uh, if you guys aren't aware, the open workouts, they interviewed him after. He's like, what are you going to do with the 500th? He's like, oh, I'm, uh, I'm a buy a Bugatti. Like, it's just, just very plain. I thought it was really, really funny. Um, but yeah, dude, like, I, at this point in his career, everybody's like, oh my god, he's, he's fighting for the MMA guys. I'm like, dude, Tom Williams doesn't give a shit about that. Like, at this point in his career, he's not fighting for, like, he's not fighting for fan approval. They, that is, the fans, like, don't put food in your table. Money does. And I truly believe that the fact that, you know, Jake included this bonus, he knows that a trilogy fight can come if he wins. I think he's going to go out there. And honestly, it comes down to the fact that I trust, obviously, both fight, both teams have watched the first fight. I trust Tyron and his team, who are, obviously, you know, Jake's working with good guys. Good guys. BJ Floor is a good coach. I was going to say, don't just respond my man BJ no, no, no. Floor like that. But obviously, I think, you know, Tyron's working with a higher caliber of coaches, but that's besides the point. I trust Tyron to implement the changes more than I trust Jake to implement the changes. Um, and obviously, I mean, here's the thing. Jake's always had a leg up on, on his competition because the guys that he's been boxing have been boxing for a few months at most. Um, not Gibb, necessarily. Gibb actually had a bit of training. Obviously, he caught five times before that, but Nate Robinson, you know, six months. Ben Askren, about three, three months. Woodley, about three months. I was say they had striking training before that, not Askren or Robinson, but Woodley did. But even then, you know, not boxing training. This is the first time he's going to be facing somebody that's been in there with him, that has had time to compete, time to train more. And even Woodley with, you know, he still gave him a hell of a fight that first time around. He just went to 10% more activity. I think he wins it. I think he's going to come out with a different strategy. I think he's going to go out balls balls out, trying to gun guns blazing and trying to get out of there, get him out of there early. I think that's his best strategy to win this one. Um, I think he knows he probably only has a couple rounds of gas in him, so I think he's going to go for it, and I think he gets it. Uh, I, I, I wrote in my, my column this week, uh, you know, Tyron Woodley has one moment to seize everything he's ever wanted. Is he going to capture it or let it slip? <laughs> Had to throw in the Eminem reference. I think I think he captures it, dude. I think uh-huh. it's a knockout. I think he secures a, a trilogy, and I think we're going to be sitting here in April having the same conversation about Jake and uh, Tyron Woodley once again. But... Just to wait to see Jake knock out Woodley fucking round four, Josh. You know what's funny? I think if Jake wins, uh, I think it's going to be a knockout. I, I think it's going to be a decision regardless. Uh, what kind of decision? Like a very clear one? Kind of. Oh, close yeah, probably. I think, if, I think if Jake wins, it's going to be probably like a clear decision. Um, because just, I, it's, just to wait till he comes out looking like fucking Lomachenko. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to happen. Um, I, 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 believe me. Uh, I, I uh, not, you think he's going to come out like Ali then? <laughs> he said he'd be the next Muhammad Ali. 
<laughs> Is he think he's gonna come out with a little shuffle? Dude, I I'm I'm not picking Tarman out of like confidence or anything. It's just like it's a close matchup. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter at the end I don't, of the day. I but... I, I want to see what happens though. Like you can't say you're kind of like no no no. I'm very, I'm interested now well, that we're like, talking about it. Hasn't some sort of interest grown? At least for me, it has. Now that we've kind of gotten into it, I'm kind of like okay, Josh. Now you're kind of selling me on it. No no, no I'm definitely interested because like like I said, if he if he put in even a little bit more activity, it's not the know, hype of the Tommy Fury fight. If I'm going to be honest, because that I would have actually been like pay per view level excited. See, that's what I'm about to get into. Do you think he fights Tommy Fury after this if he does get past Woodley? I feel like he should. I think it'd be fair, and people are going to call him out if he doesn't. And uh, it's kind of like, if he has, especially if he has a good, like a good, genuine performance. He's like, yeah, bro, look, I cleaned up after my last mess. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah, kinda, it's to be a good statement. I think it's just dependent of how how he does in this, but I think he should regardless. You know what I mean? I'm, obviously, if he, if he loses, that's the only scenario where he doesn't fight Tommy next. And Tommy's like, yeah, get wrecked, nerd. You know what I mean? Get wrecked, nerd. Yeah, dude. I, uh, you know. He's like, let me fight Woodley, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I think it's going to be an interesting um, an interesting fight. Like I said, I just trust Tyron to make the adjustments more than I trust Jake to. Um, you can argue Jake doesn't have to make adjustments. Come on, Josh. His corner isn't Urban Meyer. <laughs> yeah, that Urban Meyer. What a guy. What a dude. Um yeah, I just I'm I'm just gonna go ahead and pick. I'm just going out on a limb, and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna take it, man. It's gonna be a close fight, I think, regardless. But um, you know, I'll I'll go ahead and take time to get it done. Um, as far as the undercard goes, there's a couple of interesting fights. Is there any of them you want to go and talk about? I mean, you you know, yeah, you probably know the one I want to bring up, Josh. Don't you? Bring it up. I mean, Darren Williams. Well, is it, is it technically is it Duran or is it it's Duran, right? Duran it's, it's, I'm pretty sure it's Darren actually. Is it actually Darren Williams? I've heard it pronounced both ways. I'm not gonna lie. I think I've heard both too. I'm gonna go. Do, yeah, I'm gonna go Darren Williams fighting Frank Gore. Which you know more. You know about Frank Gore. I know about Darren Williams. So this kind of works out perfectly. They apparently both have some sort of experience. We've discussed. We discussed this a while ago. Mm-hmm. And you saw who did you see? Frank Gore or Darren Williams? Who looked kind of like a demon on the pads? Which you know that's just pads. Frank Frank looked like a demon on the pads. Yeah, so that's probably the one I'm most excited for on the other card. Because outside of that, I mean, you got some people in here who are undefeated records. You know, you got Anthony Taylor, some young guys coming up. You got Jay on Leon, Lo- Jay Leon Love coming in and representing for for Team Paul. Team Paul, you know. Hopefully, Team Paul goes uh two and zero at the start of the card. Actually, three and zero with Amanda Serrano. Yeah, dude, Jake, uh, he's building his little promotional squad. There's not a, I mean, he's got four dudes, right? He's got him, Jaylen on Love, and then Taylor and Mandis Serrano. That's not a bad four to start your promotion with. Oh, no, not at all. Um, so yeah, dude, and they got, they got obviously Anthony Taylor fighting Chris Avila. This is a setup, dude. This is the setup. You know, if he, uh, because obviously Nate Diaz is there. He, he was at the open workouts Anna yesterday. Stern fought in MMA this year? I had no idea. Fought in MMA? She did. Amanda Serrano fought in MMA this year. How early was it? Like early? Uh, yeah, this uh, month six. Oh, it's June. So June, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. She has a mission. She has a mission. Yeah. Uh, Icon Fighting Federation first round guillotine choke. Respect. Uh, respect for her, dude. Respect. Um, yeah, it's gonna be uh, an interesting, interesting little night of night of fights, man. It's uh, it's gonna be fun. Um, that's pretty much all I got for it, honestly. I mean, it's not exactly. I mean, we I just really got to. We really just got to rally back because obviously we've kind of been here before, and some of the names are kind of returning. Mm-hmm. So for sure, and it ultimately just comes down to if if Jay can get it done again, then we're gonna be talking about bigger fights. Um, and we don't know who he'll call out. Maybe he'll call someone else out, or maybe someone will be there. Maybe some money comes up that we don't expect, you know what I mean? Some Saudi money, you know, and they want to make a <laughs> big time fight. I mean, hey, but I think, like I said, I think it's more of a money thing. If the money's there, he'll take the fight. You know what I mean? Yeah. Regardless, though, we will see what happens. Um, Angel, is there anything else on the topic of boxing or MMA that you want to talk about, my guy? No, man. I mean, we're, I think we're ready to close it out, man. I mean, we're coming to the end of the year as far as the podcast and, Obviously, this year, you know, um, mm-hmm. just really excited and ready to go into the next year. And I mean, we're going to go into what year two, year three of the podcast. I don't even know anymore. What year would it be? Year three? Is it year three already? I think so. 
fuck, man. I don't know where to look at that. It's either year three or year two. I I don't even know, but I'm excited. Uh, and um, hopefully we had a, an amazing year. Obviously, I'm kind of giving our closeout speech for the year, but uh, <laughs> you know that's not this episode. But I just want to hype it up a little bit, and uh, you know, let's finish it out strong. We we probably only have maybe we're we're still debating if we're going to do an episode next week or not. Since we've been riding such a, a strong wave, and we're going to take our break uh, at the start of January because obviously we won't have MMA for for a little bit there, and then we come back with some bangers. Uh, just like we did at the start of this year. And, uh, I mean, it's a lot of excitement, man. A lot of things that we got planned and a lot of things we want to do. But, yeah, that that's it. Mm. For sure, man. I think you went in and said it pretty well. Obviously, we're still waiting to determine if we're going to have a show next week or if we're just going to go ahead and take it off since it's going to be, you know, holidays and stuff. Yeah. Um, happy Hanukkah, my guys. Happy Hanukkah, fellas. Um, yeah, dude, it's it's been a it's been a huge year for the podcast in terms of growth. Um, obviously, I think we'll still have, even if we skip next week, we'll still have, will it be a close up? Let me actually see real quick. Pull up the calendar. It would be the, not. It'd, it'd be the Sound Off Awards after that. It'd be the Sound Off Awards on the 31st. So, yeah, you guys will still get another episode from us, um, regardless of whether or not we do one next week. But, yeah, um, which, by the way, Sound Off Awards, one of my favorite episodes of the year, honestly. Just kind of going back on everything. It probably is my favorite. That and probably the annual one, you know, our anniversary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's always fun. So you guys still have that to look forward to. We'll go ahead and you know make sure to tweet everything, make sure you guys are informed about the show schedule and all that. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this one as always. Huge show. Um hope you guys enjoyed. I'm at Josh Shivanoff. He's at Angel or Take underscore O one at Courtside Sound for all things related to the show on Twitter. That's all we got. Peace and butt grease. Mouse click. Let's go.